everyone. Uh, a very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you. If you're visiting with us this morning, perhaps here for the first time, it is great to have you with us. Uh, or if you're returning for the first time after lockdown, which seems such a long, long time ago, it is really, really good that you can join us for our harvest celebrations this morning. And a very warm welcome to those who tune into our service at home later this evening, or indeed listen to the service on CD uh, later in the week. It's wonderful that this new ministry of CD, uh, 38 CDs are sent out each week uh, to people who perhaps for different circumstances aren't able to join us on a Sunday morning. So it's wonderful that what man is intended for harm, God is using for good in that way. Uh, the order of service, everything will be on the screen. We are now able to sing, uh, but softly behind face coverings. So if you would like to sing, please do apply your, safe, your face coverings. We are singing two built-in hymns this morning. So the challenge is going to be to sing softly. I don't know quite what that means, but I'll be trying to do that myself. And it's important that we do as we uh, try to protect each other and indeed those around us. And I want us, if these were normal times, do you know what I would do is ask us to turn and shake the hands of the people around us. But turn to the people around you and just give them a wave. Say you're welcome. I don't know what anybody who hasn't got audio will make of this when they see us <laughs> going like this. <laughs> without any explanation. They will think they have gone mad in that place. Those are all of our announcements. I would invite you to please stand for the words of greeting. On this Harvest Sunday, we're reminded that the land has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us. Let everyone, everywhere, honour him. Amen. We sing our opening hymn as we apply our face coverings. Come, ye thankful people, come.
Good morning, everybody. Morning. Boys and girls, this morning I have a few cards with me. And what I'm going to do is, because you're quite far away, I'm going to describe them to you. And I want you to guess what kind of card they are and why you would send them. Okay, so the first one, don't be shy on me now, I need you. It has balloons on it and it has a cake and presents. What kind of card could that be, eh, yeah, Jacob? A birthday card. Well done, Jacob, you are correct. The next one has a car on it and a very happy cat driving a car. Who knew? And loads of little elf plates. What could that one be? Teaching cats to learn to drive. Close enough. A cat has passed its driving test, okay? I knew you wouldn't get that one. This one is very pink. It has got baby grows, a bottle on it, which is given away, um, presents, and something. Welcome to the world, something girl. What could that one be? I should maybe try to show it. Why would you give that card to someone? Girl, for a girl, if someone has had a baby girl, correct. Here's another one. Well done, Lucy. It's got loads of houses on it and a moving truck. What do you think that card's about? Somebody has just walked. Moved house. Well done, Jane Russell. <laughs> oh, wasn't Jane, sorry. It was Isaac. Well done, Isaac. I just saw Jane. Sorry, sorry, Isaac. And you can guess this one. Two words saying thank you. What kind of card could that be, Jane? Isaac, can you help her? A thank you card. Well done. It's a thank you card. This thing was planned. It'll be better next time. So well done for guessing those cards. Now, there's one of those cards, boys and girls, that we could send every single day. And you could send it maybe 100 times a day. Do you think it is the cats passing their driving test? No, neither do I. Do you think it could be somebody moving house every single day? No, we're shaking our heads. Do you think it could be the thank you card? Do you think you would have a reason to say thank you every single day? Yeah, Lucy's saying, yeah. Of course, it's the thank you card. And Harvest reminds us that it's a time to say thank you, but to somebody in particular, who could that be? Who are we saying thank you to today in church when we look around and see the fruit and the flowers and everything that this person has done for us? I think Lucy knows. God, isn't it? We are saying thank you to God today. And we have so, so many reasons to say thank you. And in your folders today, in your memory verse, I'm going to give you the answer now because it's Psalm 136, verse 1, which says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to God. Not just at harvest, Christmas, all the time because he is good. We need to have a good attitude. And a good attitude is an attitude of gratitude. Okay? We need to have an attitude of gratitude where we are saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And I look around, and it's a wee bit different this morning. This is my second harvest, but it's a wee bit different this morning. And the way we're all sitting is different. And the way we have to wear masks is different. But do you know what? Thank you, God, we are here today. In the middle of a pandemic, God in his goodness has us here today. And we still have reasons to be thankful. And I know sometimes during this whole thing, we can get a wee bit down and think, when's this going to end? But we have so many reasons to say thank you. Maybe you've had more time with your family than you have ever had. Thank you, God. Find reasons to have an attitude of gratitude even in the hard times. I'm going to finish with this. We have a sign in our bedroom, a lovely big plaque, and it says, I each night give thanks to God. Every night before you go to sleep, give thanks to God. So what I'm trying to do is when I'm saying my prayer tonight, I think of five things that I want to say thank you to God for. Maybe something that's happened that day or for somebody in particular. So I want you to try that, not just tonight, but every night. Think of five things that you can say thank you God for this, thank you God. Because everything you have is from God. It says that in James 1. So let's thank God now. Let's close our eyes and thank God. God, we thank you that you are so, so, so good. Even when things are so different 
And so scary at times or sad at times, you are still good. Thank you, God, that we are standing and sitting in this church today when we thought this might be possible for a long time. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that the harvest is in. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let our hearts cry today and each and every day. Thank you, God. You are good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Forgive us, good Lord. Young people are deprived because of inherited selfishness. Forgive us, good Lord. Men and women are embittered by injustice or poverty. Forgive us, good Lord. And we say together, stir us to consider our priorities, strengthen our wills to examine the way we live, Guide all who make political decisions which affect the poor in the name of him who, though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor, that we, through his poverty, might become rich. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our Bible reading um, for our service this morning is from Matthew chapter 20. And we begin at verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his supervisor, 
Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came, and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of their work and heat of the day. But he answered one of them, friend, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first. The first will be last. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come this morning to thank you for the harvest of the land, help us to remember your amazing grace given freely in equal measure to those who come to you. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So that parable that I just read of the, the workers in the vineyard is one that lots of people really do struggle with because it all seems so terribly unfair. It's a parable set at harvest time and the owner of the vineyard is about to hire some workers to harvest his crop of grapes. Did you know near to where I live, the apple growers draw in extra workers at harvest time. That the fruit is harvested as quickly as possible, so that nothing will be lost. And that's exactly what is happening here in this parable. It seems in this vineyard, this vineyard had produced a very, very good crop. So the owner needed some extra hands to help bring in the harvest. Early in the morning, he heads out to hire some workers with the promise that they would be paid one denarius for their day's work. Later on, at about nine in the morning, he went out to the marketplace and he hired some more workers with the promise that they would be paid whatever is right. And as the day wore on, he was going to need even more workers. And so he went out again at noon, and then at three in the afternoon, and he hired some more. That was the come. Finally, just one hour before quitting time, he went out one last time. He found people hanging about doing nothing. He said to them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. Though when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages. Well, a big rock was about to break out because all the workers were paid the same, denarius. Those who toiled all day long, they were furious. They went straight to the boss and they complained. These men who were hired last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. And you know on the surface, it all seems terribly unfair, it's even unjust. Workers who had worked hard all day in the sun and the heat felt unfairly treated because others who had worked for just one hour got the very same pain. 
And you know, like all the parables that Jesus told, we have to get beneath the earthly story to discover the heavenly meaning. And we are given a clue to the heavenly meaning in the very first verse. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. This parable is all about the kingdom of heaven. It has absolutely nothing to do with employment law or workers' rights, anything like that. Because if it was, it would be affirming a very unfair, very unjust landowner. A landowner that if he were living today would find himself in court charged with discrimination, violation of equal pay legislation. This parable has got everything to do with God's amazing grace. Ask some people today what the word grace means to them. And they will just tell you, well that's my auntie's name. That's my little niece's name. And that's as far as I would go. We live in a world where everything is about performance, equality. But here Jesus shows us a model of God's grace. And from a human perspective, that grace isn't really one bit fair. Because God's grace is not about counting up what we have done. It's not about any kind of arithmetic. I once heard such grace being described in these terms. Grace means that instead of reaping what we do deserve, which is separation from God, we are blessed with what we don't deserve, forgiveness, reconciliation, and a richly rewarding relationship with the gracious and generous God. In telling this parable, Jesus is trying to teach us three very important truths about God's generous grace. First of all then, entry into God's kingdom is not based on what we do or how long we might do it for. God's salvation is not about reward for what we have done. It's not about checks and balances. It's not about human effort. It's all about the undeserved, unmerited grace of God. The workers in the vineyard who worked all day long, when they remind us of those who think, who think they can somehow gain entry into God's kingdom by toil and effort and works. They were clearly annoyed because they got the same as those who had worked for one hour. You know, in God's kingdom, no longer would power and privilege and status and keeping of rules and regulations give anybody a head start. Everyone would be accepted on equal terms. Everyone, that is, who comes with no merit of their own, those with a humble heart who know their need of God's grace, such people would be welcome into the kingdom of heaven by God's grace alone. One day, a Pharisee and a tax collector went into the temple to pray. The Pharisee prayed, No God, I thank you. I am not like other people, robbers and evildoers and adulterers, even like that tax collector standing over there. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector beat his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We can never earn our way 
into the kingdom of heaven by a past life, even though many will often try. Secondly, there's a reminder here that all who seek the kingdom of heaven will be met with much generosity. In Luke's gospel, Jesus tells the parable of the prodigal son, the younger of the two sons. He wanted his inheritance right away, and so off he went, and he blew the lot on wild living. You know, it wasn't long before he hit rock bottom. And then he thought about his father. He thought about back home. And so off he went. His father saw him in the distance and ran to welcome him home. We all know the response of the father. The, the best robe was brought out. A ring was placed on his finger and the best of the herd was made ready for a banquet. The other son was furious. It's not fair, he cried. I've stayed with you all this time, slaving after you. And I never got as much as a young boy to share with my friends. But you know what? He was quite right. It wasn't fair. But in the world's eyes, grace isn't fair. These two sons are right here in this parable of the workers in the vineyard. The older son who's dead at home is a bit like those who worked all day in the scorching heat. The younger son who went off in a good time is like the one who only worked for just a few hours. Do you know when we return to God, no matter what we have done, no matter where we have been, no matter how long we have been away, we will find the grace of God more generous than we could ever, ever have imagined. And thirdly, this parable reminds us that those who genuinely seek the kingdom of God, even if they think they have left it far too late, will receive God's saving grace in the same measure as anybody else. Remember, the workers who were hired at five in the afternoon, just one hour to go, and that working day, this was the eleventh hour. No one should ever think that they have left it too late to come and be part of God's kingdom. As Jesus hung on the cross, the criminal on one side hurled insults at him, while the other said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Here we have a man finding the door of the kingdom of heaven wide open at the eleventh hour. And deep down we might be thinking, do you know that's not one bit fair? A scoundrel who lived his whole life doing wrong and at the eleventh hour receiving all the benefits the kingdom of God could offer. And yes, on a human level, of course, it isn't fair. God's grace is all over this parable. And that grace is still the same today. It's not the sort of thing that any of us can bargain for or expect more grace than anybody else because of who we are or what we might have done. Just remember the workers in the vineyard. They were all paid exactly the same, just as God lavishes his grace in equal measure to each one who comes to him. It was the workers who had slaved all day long and got that paid the same as everybody else, who broke the most. The landowner said to one of them, Friend, I want to give the one who was hard last the same as I give you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? 
This generous landowner is such a perfect picture of our good and generous God. And it's at this time of the year, harvest time, that we are most aware of that goodness and that generosity. We come as thankful people to a service such as this to say thank you to God for the harvest. And, and I know, as Christine has already said, and she's still a couple of my points by the way, Christine. <laughs> the things are different this year in church, as is just about everything else these days. The one thing remains the same. Our God has once again blessed us with a good harvest. Once again, in spite of all we have been living through, in spite of all the challenges we have faced with lockdowns and restrictions, and God has still supplied our every need. I want to leave you with a thought as I finish. Harvest Thanksgiving is for the season of harvest. But God's generosity continues long after harvest has passed. When I was thinking about this sermon, I began to think about that word thanksgiving. That word thanksgiving. And by changing just one little letter, that word is changed into something quite different. But when we take away the first G and replace it with an L, instead of thanksgiving, we have thanks living, challenging us to live each and every day from one harvest to the next with hearts full of thankfulness to God for his generous grace. And so whether it's summer or winter, or springtime, or harvest, God's mercies are new every morning. And every morning, he is worthy of our thanks and our praise. God bless these words to your hearts this morning. Trevor for a, a wonderful reminder of God's amazing grace. We stand now as we affirm our faith uh, in this incredible creator God who continues to sustain us through his Holy Spirit. Please stand with me as we affirm our faith. We pray together. We believe and trust in God, the Father who made the world. We believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. We believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Take our seats for our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The collect for Harvest Thanksgiving. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness 
and give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Father God, as we continue in prayer, we thank you that when your grace abounds, something of your kingdom comes. We thank you as Trevor has shared with us for stories in scripture which illustrate that, demonstrate that so, so powerfully and effectively. A lost son, a thief on a cross, workers in a vineyard. When your grace abounds, Father, something of your kingdom comes here on earth. And we pray, Father, that your grace would abound in each one of us, in our words, in our actions, in our relationships one with the other, and indeed with people in the wider community and of other denominations, so that as people see grace abounding in our words and in our actions, they might also see something of your kingdom coming. We pray for the presidential election in the United States of America in under three weeks' time. We pray, Father, that more of your grace would abound. And in so doing, your kingdom would come. We pray for the ongoing pandemic, the situation that each of us face throughout this world, but particularly for those in government within our land. We pray, Father, that more of your grace would abound in the words that are used to speak of one another politically. And in so doing, more of your kingdom would come. We pray, Father, for our health service. Under increasing pressure. For those of us who are required to avail of it in this crisis, and those who aren't, we pray, Father, that grace would abound in our words and in our actions. As we reflect on our health service, those in the front line, those who are in care homes, community, in hospitals, and in other contexts. We pray, Father, that we would hold those people in prayer, both men and women, and that through that, your grace would abound and your kingdom would come. And we thank you, Father, for this harvest time. A time where we see your grace in abundance as you have provided again and again and again. As long as the earth endures, your word says, there will be seed time and harvest. And so we gather on this day with thankful hearts. We thank those in farming those in fisheries, those who are involved in the production of the food and the delivery of the food, which we so freely enjoy in our land. We thank you for those who have so sacrificially prepared our church for this act of worship today. We ask that you would bless them, Father. Thank you for the, the fruit of their labours. And as we look around us in this Harvest Sunday and recognize just how gracious you are towards us again and again, Father, as we recognize that and as we live lives that are thanks living, we pray that something of your kingdom would come through us. And we conclude our prayers as we join together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Before we sing our closing piece, I would like to thank Trevor for a wonderful sermon this morning, reminding us of God's amazing, amazing grace. I'd like to thank Orly and Ruth. Uh, I 
I'd like to thank Karen, Jeremy and Matt. Uh, they haven't led us in worship yet, but they will. But Orly and Ruth have, and we're indebted to each of you for all that you do week by week. I'd like to thank the stewards who have worked to seek us so safely this morning and we trust and hope and pray that you have felt safe and secure as we have celebrated the harvest once more. And I'd like to thank uh, publicly Sarah McCorkle and her team of volunteers who have worked so, so hard to prepare our church so beautifully this morning. Let's put our hands together and give them all. And I'd like to share a letter, an email which I received this morning. It's a Thanksgiving letter from Muridi Diocese in South Sudan, from our friend Bishop Moses uh, to his friends here in the cathedral. Greetings to you and Naomi from your other home. Hope you are well and my family in Dromore. Things are changing from situation of Corona in South Sudan, but unfortunately we are seriously affected by the inflation of dollars against local South Sudan pounds, and that has added the cry of the poor people in the country. This is literally what Bishop Moses has written. The road between Juba and Maridi continues to be blocked. We are also thankful to God for his much mercy and blessings he has for us. Despite Corona, but has not claimed much lives of our people. Corona has created more sense of God to many people. Now our churches are full of people on Sundays, even bigger than time before Corona. Too much rain is also part of our blessings. We have plenty of that in our land. Too much rain is also part of our blessings as the land is too wet for cultivation. I'm also grateful for today my first granddaughter will be baptised. May you need something to pray about. And Bishop Moses asks us to pray for him. It will be a busy time in December. The Archbishop of Western Equatoria and in the internal province will be with him and really with a large team and churches will be gathering together for a service of confirmation. And he also asks us to pray for his visit to the remote archdeaconries of Cozy and Eddy in January and February. It's important for us to hold our brothers and sisters in prayer and for them to hold us in prayer and it's important for us in spite of the challenges that these people face on a daily basis they are thankful on this harvest thanksgiving sunday let us live lives that reflect thanks living thank you so much trevor for that really really helpful illustration i'm going to hand over now to karen as she invites us to close with great is thy faithfulness Karen. thank you jeff would you like to stand with me and don't forget to put your face mask on if you're going to sing thank you
please do take your seats. It's really, really difficult to sing a hymn like that softly, but thank you, thank you for indulging us in that way, and in so doing, keeping each of us that little bit safer. Please do remain in your seats until a steward comes to you and indicates that it's your time to leave. We'll be using two doors to exit this morning, the middle door and also the baptistry. Just go to the door that the steward uh, who comes to the end of your pew indicates to you. We bow our heads now for a final prayer of blessing. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those whom you love and care for, both this harvest thanksgiving and forevermore. Amen.